there are significant risks uh, with not managing research data effectively. Obviously, there's the risk of data loss. When we're dealing with observational measurements of, uh, of the weather, we actually can't repeat those observations. When that information is lost, it's lost forever. And that's clearly, it's a loss to the individual projects and it's a loss to society as a whole. There are also institutional reputational risks. If data isn't available for verification, there is at least the suspicion or the, you know, one can't prove the integrity of the research that has, has been conducted. Complex and difficult experiments might have to be repeated because we can't make sense of the results we got from the last ones because we didn't document them effectively. The research enterprise as a whole produces huge amounts of research data. We see in medical sciences two publications, research publications, being published uh, every minute of the day. So there are huge, huge amounts of information in the research community. Providing access to all of this information is absolutely critical if we want to accelerate the rate of progress for research and science. The British Antarctic Survey uh, collects all types of environmental data and obviously the work in the, the climate and uh, sea level rise and things like that make it very important that we look after our research integrity and our data integrity. The term research data management has come up quite a lot recently. And people tend to look at it as something that's a new onus on researchers to consider and it's a funding body mandate. And I think it's important that researchers go back and realize that this is just part of good research practice. Data management is just about being able to verify your results, more importantly being able to make sure that those results can be shared with the right people at the right time and that people know how to cite it and how they can reuse it. Increasingly, however, there's an institutional responsibility to provide a supporting infrastructure and service to underpin good research and good research data management. And so institution, institutions also run the risk of losing reputation and potentially even funding if they don't provide um, that infrastructure to an acceptable standard. The problems you would have from a researcher's point of view of not managing your data properly is that you would, first of all, find it very hard to find your data and combine it with other people's data. Two good reasons why a researcher should manage their data effectively. One is so that they can find it themselves two years later down the line, and the second reason is so that their colleagues around the world can find and use their data for new research to develop new discoveries. The socio-cultural issues, I think, are the real problems right now. A lot of the technical issues are fairly easy to solve, but changing scientific culture is actually quite difficult. For me as a researcher, it was that I didn't know what I could do with my data. I didn't know. Uh, a lot of the people I know think that you can't do things when quite the opposite is true. Research councils are encouraging users to share their data and people are thinking that they have to hold on to it and hide it and only publish it in normal traditional formats. Certainly one of the real challenges we face is the tension between the pressure to make more data more open earlier on uh, and the real fear that many researchers have that if they do that um, others will reap the benefits from the hard work that they've done. Uh, that, that's a real fear, uh, we've got to acknowledge it uh, while also demonstrating the, the real value that we can get out of making data as open as possible, as early as possible. Researchers need to think seriously about how they're going to manage their data. It's not just that funders are going to require them to manage their data more carefully, make it reusable, but the researchers themselves will get more impact. Their data will be cited, their papers will be cited more often if they make it easier for other researchers to work with their data. Researchers need to be making all of their research objects available. By making your research data available on platforms such as Figshare, which have licensing rules, which mean everything on Figshare is under CC Creative Commons licensing, this means that you have to attribute the researcher if you use their data. As opposed to being a loss of credit, you can find yourself getting a lot more credit for your research 
uh, not only in citations and traditional publishing methods, but also in other alt metrics and what have you? Well, the Digital Creation Centre has been a very important source nationally of expertise. It's international knowledge, it's uh, developments in research disciplines, developments in uh, research funders, developments at different institutions, uh, and a good focus for that activity has been the Digital Creation Centre as a place to go to find the information and the expertise. The DCC is a relatively small organisation, but despite that it can make a significant difference in the area of digital curation and research data management, and indeed it has so. We've been running the DCC roadshows for one year and we visited a lot of uh, places around the UK and people are now much more aware of the issues of data management and I think we can move forwards now and start to deliver more um, sophisticated advanced workshops that take uh, the DCC activities to a new space and particularly working with individual institutions on more specific strategic uh, priorities. Given that research is very much international in scope, researchers are collaborating across international boundaries, there's a strong incentive for us to work with these other services so that we don't duplicate each other's work, so that we can share uh, uh, and exploit what each other do, and also to encourage funders in multiple countries to work together in similar ways so that we don't need to develop 10 or 20 different tools to suit different national perspectives. That will save us all time, it will save us all effort, uh, and it will make the process of actually doing the research far more straightforward. We are a small organisation. We cannot reach all 100,000 researchers in the UK, but if we can get more, then we'll have this kind of a domino effect. The more of them come to realise what's going on, the more they will pass those, those issues on. The DCC has also worked very effectively with UK universities. There's the new uh, data management roadshows, which have reached institutions which have been le hitherto less engaged with these issues, and that's been an important form of outreach. And the Digital Curation Centre's publications, the how-to guides and other sources of, of high-quality material on these subjects have, have allowed the, the Curation Centre to, to, reach, to reach an audience which might not have been expected for an organisation of its size. The average scientist is really quite confused about what are the best ways to do things. So if we can promote good standards and fewer standards, uh, simple approaches and then tools that make their jobs easier to do their work, then that would be a huge contribution to the data management movement. A research liaison manager, the first place they might go to is the Digital Creation Centre to find what's already been done elsewhere and to try and uh, avoid reinventing wheels. My request would be for funders, for institutions, to get the researchers early, get them on the first day of their PhD and tell them this is what you can do with your data or, as well, this is what you can't do, but at least let them know so they can make their own decisions about what they want to do with it and uh, help encourage open data in that sense. Well the DCC can help researchers uh, in a number of ways, both directly by offering them tools and support that they can use while their research projects are going on, and can also help them indirectly by supporting their funders and their institutions and the data centres uh, to, to play their role in the management of research data. There are lots of things the DCC does to help institutions and individual researchers with research data management. We monitor research funders' data policies, so we help raise awareness of specific requirements. We provide guidance and tools such as DMP Online and in terms of actually supporting institutions to develop their own strategies and infrastructure for research data management, we're actually undertaking a, a programme of engagements at the moment where we're supporting specific institutions and providing tailored support. The DCC has a bundle of four main tools which help researchers uh, and other data management stakeholders in the research data management process. Uh, the one which is probably the most useful for the researcher would be DMP Online. DMP Online helps researchers by asking them questions and making them think. Right at the start when they're applying for funding, what they need to do to make their data accessible and usable in the long term, not just for them but for other people as well.
the, the other three tools that the DCC offers are of particular interest to research support staff and, and to data managers. Uh, in, in order, in the order that you would probably use them, uh, the Data Asset Framework, or DAF, helps you to identify the size and shape of your data-related holdings. Trambora is the digital repository audit method based on risk assessment. It helps you to identify and to communicate the risks which pertain to those assets which you've identified using DAF. Uh, Cardio helps to produce a maturity uh, index uh, which uh, it is based upon communication between all the different stakeholders in the research data management process. And what it does is it identifies um, areas of disconnect between, for, for example, how the researchers may feel they manage things and how the research managers may feel that the researchers manage things. Uh, and it helps to draw, uh, draw out these shared assumptions and to help communicate them and I ideally find some middle ground. We're starting to see more awareness that data can take a number of different shapes and forms. And uh, the drivers from funding bodies in the last few years has raised awareness. But again, it is coming back to this notion that uh, data management is just part of good research practice. So I, I think there is an awareness starting to, to filter through all the disciplines, that this is just the, the normal research practice activity. In future, I think the Digital Curation Centre will have a very important role in coordinating expertise, not just nationally, but internationally, in terms of data standards that people can use to make their data reusable. Uh, so I would see them as a kind of a focus point, a coordination point for international as well as national expertise in how you manage research data. We've seen a lot of researchers, whether they're undergraduates or postgraduates or early career researchers looking for training in data management. Um, in the past few years, because of the funding body mandates and uh, demand for data management plans to be accompanied with bids, I think there's also a need to train peer reviewers. So if we are making data available, we have to make sure that the people who review bids understand how to review data as well. There's been a, a change in the balance of the DCC developing new tools and doing its own research towards encouraging others and helping others to make use of the tools and the expertise that it's developed. <laughs>